Welcome to the Avesser channel. Today is a pretty exciting day. This is the first video in a series that we're going to be having where we're going to be showing off the first batch of 10 robots. We recently finished building these and they have all been tested and they all work. I have not been good on releasing content, so subscribe. We're going to have a lot coming. As an introduction here, we're going to show off this robot. These type of robots are called SCARA class robots. It's SCARA meaning Selective Compliant Articulated Robot Arm. You can see here that we have a Z-rail that moves up and down. We have Theta here, and we have Phi. These are the articulated portions here. These are called Selective Compliant because Z moves on this axis, and then these are the two compliant joints. So selective compliant articulated robot arm. In this robot, in this video, we are going to be focused mainly on axes 4, 5, and 6. You can see here we have axis 4, 5, and 6. And our N effector here is a little pneumatic gripper. So let's get this started. We'll initialize the robot. We also need to initialize the tool head. As you can see here, the encoders have become alive. I'm going to turn off the motors here so that I can show some of the other parts here. <clears throat> you can see up in the screen that the encoders have started reading. I'll move phi, or I'm sorry, I'll move theta, and you can see that theta is moving back and forth, again with phi. You can see that phi also is going. We have the fourth axis. Axis 5, sorry about that, and Axis 6. It's difficult to see here, but at the moment the there is a yellow dot that is chasing around these. It doesn't show up on the camera very well. But that means that it is in float mode and the motors are off so you can move everything around. Let me enable the motors. And you can see that the yellow dot has turned into a red dot. It's a red dot because the machine is not homed. So the motors are on, but the motors are on, but the machine doesn't know exactly where it is. And if you're looking, you can see that the numbers coming off the encoders are jumping around a little bit. And that's okay. These are magnetic encoders, and there's always a little bit of noise in them. We have done some averaging, and this seems to be about as good as we can get them. But 
at the end of the day, it's okay because they really only need to be at max about a half a degree in accuracy. And that's because of the way that stepper motors work, that the way that we do this is we use the encoders to know where we are within a certain amount because we really only need to know where we are within two full steps of the stepper motor, in which case in all these axes, it is going to be more than a half a degree, in which case these motors, or I'm sorry, in which case these encoders are more than accurate. So I am going to move this camera over to a tripod and we will continue with this demonstration from there. Okay, here we are again and uh, let's turn on the machine. So we are going to reinitialize, which is going to turn on the motors for phi and theta. We are also going to initialize the tool head. You can see that all these now are flashing red, which means the motors are on and the motor is, and the arm is in position with the motors on. So let's home the machine. First, we are going to home the fourth axis. See that move? And then we are going to home axes five and six. You can see zero for axis five is straight out, and straight up and down is zero for axis six. Go back here, and we are going to home theta and phi. And in this, it's going to, it could potentially go through a couple loops. It's going to go to where it thinks home is. It's going to go, you just saw it kind of jump right there. It means that it was one step off from where it thought that it was when it originally read the encoders to where home actually is. And you can see up in the display up in the corner that the actual position when it's at home and the counters for the stepper motor drivers are at zero is actually X, which is theta, negative 0 0.2, and Y, which is phi, negative 0 0.1. These numbers just so happen to coincide with where zero for the encoders and zero for where the machine is coincide. So <clears throat> now we are also going to home Z. Zoom in here a little bit. And we'll jog the machine around a little bit. Let's take Z down. We'll take theta in the negative direction, 10 degrees, do 10 more, phi, and the fourth axis. And then in our tool head screen here, we have axes 5 and 6, which we can jog around. So let's take five down 10 degrees. I'm sorry, up 10 degrees. And down. Let's move back up. We will move around the six axis, which will rotate it this way. Also in here we have buttons here where we can open and close the grippers. So let's do those a few times. Close the gripper, 
Open gripper, close gripper, open gripper. Apologies, the compressor just came on. Why don't we give myself a moment and we'll come back when it turns off. Okay, the compressor has turned off and we are going to now show the playback functionality that we have programmed here. So let me turn off the motors, turn off the tool head, come back here, we'll turn off the rest of the motors. Okay, so now you can see all the motors are off and we can move the arm wherever we want. You can see still also that the encoders are following the arm where it's at and that's the functionality that we're going to be using. We're going to go to the program tab and you can see that I just have a few buttons. So why don't we... And in this tab here you see that we can have some a few buttons here. We have a button to open the gripper, a button to close the gripper, a button to add a waypoint, to clear the buffer of all the commands that we've sent it, and another button to save to file. Z cannot be moved with the encoders, so it has to be jogged around by the machine itself. So let's go through here and we will make some points. So let's kind of start in a near zero position here. We are going to add a waypoint. Let's move over to the side here. We'll kind of give us an angle like this. Let's add a waypoint. Let's close the gripper. Let's move over like this. We'll add a waypoint. Let's open the gripper, and we'll just keep doing a few moves like this. Add a waypoint, close the gripper. Let's move Z around a little bit. Add a waypoint. Let's open the gripper. Add a waypoint. Add a waypoint, close the gripper, and let's move Z back up again. We'll add a waypoint. We'll move very close to back to where home was. We'll add one more waypoint and we'll save the file. So now we have created a program and let's play it back. Now, before we play the pro program back, we are going to have to Rehome the machine so the machine knows where it's at. So let's home axes five and six. Home the fourth axis. We'll home theta and phi. And because Z never gets dragged around, Z actually is going to be fine right where it's at. You can see here that it already knows that Z is at 130 millimeters and we're okay to go there. So we are going to start the routine.
and you can see that the routine function is designed to loop around and around and around again as if you were having a production line and you were doing this over and over and over again. In order to stop the routine, you can push stop, but it's not going to stop the program. It's going to go until the program is complete and it ends up at the last part of the routine. Again, if we just wanted to start it again, start routine, and we start back at the beginning again. Thanks for watching. Again, like I said, we have lots more content coming out, so please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.